Hi Chad, welcome to the competitive United tier list by a pro player at Lou. We're going to rank the tier list by S, A, B, C. I don't think any Pokemon is a D tier or deserves a D tier. I know I used to put uh, Doraldon in the F tier, but I think he's actually fine now. And that's gonna be the SS plus tier. SS S plus tier. So we're gonna start by Breaking the Pokemons by the role, and then we go from there. Alright, Chad, we organized every, everyone by the role. We're gonna go for Attacker or Rondas, then we go Support, Defender, and Speedstar. First, we start with Venusaur. This is a competitive tier list. I think currently where Venusaur is, in my opinion, on the current tier list for competitive scene is probably B tier. I think Venusaur is a very solid character. I don't think it shines too well currently in the competitive scene. I think Cerulege is very good into it, for example. Characters like, it's like in a heavy Aronda beta. And I do think that the Venusaur can work very well. But at the same time, I don't, I don't feel like Venusaur does too much in the competitive scene right now. You didn't really see it much at Worlds. You don't really see it in tournaments. When you see it, it does like bomber damage with like Solar Beam and Ultimates, right? It's very powerful. I could put Venusaur in A tier. What do you guys think? A or B tier? I think both are fine, but in my opinion, like Venusaur is like a B plus tier. B plus, B tier. Like high B. Okay, next up we have Mewtwo. I I personally think that Mewtwo is S tier in the competitive scene. I think it's a very strong character. I think it's very underrated. Not a lot of people play it. Obviously, you take up points as energy when you play EX Pokemon or former EX energy. Um, I personally think you can put it in A or S tier. I think more in the Asian, in the Asian meta, Mewtwo Y is more favored than in the West meta. But I do think that Mewtwo Y is a very strong character. It doesn't really have the best early game, but when you get level 5, it's going to be very good. So I personally think that Mewtwo Y is S tier just because of the way the character works. Like the moment you get bigger evolution, you do so much damage in such a short amount of time. The ultimate is very nice. The only issue I'm having with Mewtwo Y is probably that he is very bad at farming. So what the Japanese or Asian meta is doing is they are playing Mewtwo Y with XP share. You saw the like World Champions panel playing Mewtwo Y and XP share. They did lose the game, but it looked very cool. Maybe because I'm on the west side, STM may be a bit too high. We could put it in A tier as well. So I think we're going to put it in A tier for now. Because in my tier list, I would put the best character in the game, which we're going to do it later in the video. It's uh, gonna be a, a character that recently got buffed. It's very powerful. I think Delphox is a pretty solid character. It is a very fun attacker. I do think that like Delphox has like very bad scaling in the early game. Like not scaling. It's very bad in the early game, but it does have a secure. So even if you are not the best early game character and your power specs are not that strong, the moment you get level 11, I think Delphox is very nice. So when you play Delphox, I think it's very nice to combine it with like a Snorlax, for example, because Snorlax has such a good early game and Devox is like a mid secure. So if you combine these two characters, you can rip the farm very fast and uh, get the Devox pretty online pretty fast. So I think Devox is like, in my opinion, a little bit higher than the Venusaur. B plus A tier. Would say that. I think Devox is just a great character. It got some buffs, it got some nerfs, but overall a great character. I think that Mew is a S tier. In the competitive scene, I think when you are very good at Mew, I will probably put Mew S tier. Because the mechanics that you can do on Mew are insane. The only issue that Mew currently has is like, if you don't get the level fast enough, you will not do have the biggest impact. But then the argument is also like, Asia plays Mew with XP share or Fanny specifically, and it works very well. Even though you are level 11, like it just, uh, like it's a smash you doing 100k every game, even if he has like low level on you. That's one of the reasons why I think competitively you is an S tier. Because if you are a great new player, it's just it's just criminal. So EV evolutions are interesting, right? Like we have Espeon, we have Sylveon, we have Flashion. I think that all of these EV evolutions used to be very high in the tier list. But the, the way like the meta works right now, it's heavy Arwanda meta. You don't really play double mage in competitive. And if you play double mage most of the time, you are not gonna be successful just because the Arwanas are just so powerful. So I think that the Espeon is like high B plus tier, B, A tier potentially, but I wouldn't put Espeon on A tier anymore. We might have the argument that we put it Espeon on A tier. I mean, it's still a great character. It has great secure, it's strong. 
It's like B plus. Sylveon. I think Mystical Fire Sylveon is very good. I think it's very annoying to play against because you can like shred. You cannot shred. Like you can decrease the special attack from enemy special attackers. I think Sylveon is like depending on the draft where you use it. It's very good in the double mage. I don't think Hyper Voice is as good as uh, it looks. It got a recent like rework where you can spread the Hyper Voice. But I previously like I personally like the previous. Hyper Voice from Sylveon, just let me know in the comments if you like the new Hyper Voice or not. But I think Mystical Fire is very strong, so I, I will put Sylveon on the A tier in competitive. Glacian is weird. Glacian used to be like S plus tier, S tier back in the day, but I feel like it keeps falling off. I personally would put Glacian on a solid B tier, close to B plus. I think that the Icicle Spear build is very annoying to deal with. I think it has some like a lot of potentials. It's very good in the defenders. But I just feel like Glacier falls off so much. I think if you are a cracked IC win player like Yeet fan, you can make probably Glacier work very well. But I think Glacier is just a solid B tier. Cinderace, I think Cinderace is a B tier Pokemon. People might argue with me, put it in A tier, put it in C tier. I used to play Cinderace a lot. I think it has a lot of carry potential, but it's really squishy. So if you play against like Cerulege, Charizard, characters like this just one shot you on cooldown, like Leafeon. It's just very annoying. I think it depends on the Cinderace player. You can play a lot of movesets. You can play Parable with Faint Attack. You can play Blaze Kick with Flame Charge. There's a lot of like different abilities that you can play. The Cinderace is a pretty solid character. I think it deserves the B tier. I don't think it's in C tier either. I think Attacker like Dragapult. I I really don't understand. Why would you nerf Dragapult? The character that underperforms in competitive the most. The character that has a very hard time scaling into the into the game because of its power spike and you nerf it. I mean it doesn't make sense. I personally think that in competitive, Dragapult is in C tier. I would not put it in D tier. I think it has carry potential. Like if you have 10 kills with Phantom Force, you can do so much damage throughout the game. And also the late game fight. So it's a very unique character and very cool character. Right, Greninja is interesting because Greninja got a recent buff, right? It got buffed, so people started playing Greninja a little bit more. I think Greninja is, again, draft dependent. I take in mind the draft mode. I think that Greninja is, like, B+, plus, high B tier, like Delphox and Greninja. Maybe you can put Greninja a little bit higher. Because the, the buffs are just very nice. You do so much damage now. Um, Like, the scaling is very cool as well. You can potentially one-shot enemies with Surf as well. You can play Water Shuriken. You can play basically every moveset on Greninja. It's a very flexible character and very, very cool. The thing about Greninja is he's an attacker who can also go on the melee stance and do like melee damage. So that's a pretty cool feature on Greninja. I think it's high B+, plus, high B tier. Again, I would say it depends on the Greninja player to make it work or not. For example, Uzi from Melee is a very good Greninja player. So he could probably make Greninja work. I would put it in B+. Plus. Ludorodon got a recent patch note. Like, not a recent, but like, he got a buff on its abilities. It was like very cool in the beginning. Because like, people started playing Ludorodon. Flash Cannon is, feels very cool right now. But again, in competitive, I feel like Ludorodon has a very hard time. We saw in the Unity European Cup, Ludorodon being played. And it actually worked very well. It looked very strong as well. So again, it's a like draft dependent Pokemon, but it's like not really the best attacker. So it's like a CTR, low CTR as well. Pikachu, obviously, Pikachu is just STR. Uh, we got a patch note, the freezing patch, and Pikachu didn't get nerfed. I, I'm not really sure why Pikachu is not getting nerfed. It's the most disgusting attacker in the game right now. It is very close to S+, plus, STR. You can basically pick it in every game. It's just very good. Obviously, if you can play against double mage as Pikachu, you don't want to play Volt Hacker and you're going to get outranged. But he does so much damage, so the moment he goes on the back line, you can just one-shot any attacker. You can play Pikachu with every single moveset. The Asia meta likes to play Electro Ball a little bit more than Thunder, while um, Europeans or West likes to play Thunder, Thunder, Thunder Ball. Cremoran, I am not sure. Like, Cremoran looked very good in the Asia side. It also looked very good in the Unity, Unity European Cup. Unity Country played Cremoran against the Team Germany and they made the Cremoran work. For their win. It got a recent pet like patch. It got nerfed again. The Kremlin is like weird. It always get buffed. It always get nerfed. Can you just decide where to put Kremlin? Why are we nerfing Kremlin again? It wasn't a pretty solid spot. It was able to carry, right? And now we nerf it again. So before I would put Kremlin in A tier, but now I would just put it in B tier. So like B plus. Probably next to Espeon. A bit higher than Espeon. So yeah. Talon is weird. Because I think Antenna is a very great character. I think it, overall, in my opinion, it's better than Xavier and Mewtwo Y. I think it's like high A plus S tier. I wouldn't really put it in B, B tier. Because Antenna has such a cool carry potential. The, the bug is still there on Antenna. So if you die, you get more crit. Not sure why they're not hotfixing it. Maybe it's an intended thing. 
for Inteleon, but it's definitely something that makes Inteleon very strong. So the moment Inteleon dies one time in a game, he does 3x more damage on the crit. And that's one of the reasons why I think Inteleon is a very good character. It has a lot of carry potential. It has great secure, it has great early game. It is very good throughout the entire game. So Inteleon is gonna be A tier for this spot. And probably deserves also the A tier. Gardevoir? Gardevoir is weird. Because I think Gardevoir has a lot of carry potential. I think it's a very cool character. In competitive, you don't really play it again, it's a competitive tier list. I think Gardevoir deserves like a B solid B tier, close to B plus. I wouldn't say it's A tier or S plus. It is very draft dependent. I think it's very good in the defenders. It can increase the damage from special attackers as well. It's a very cool character. But again, in competitive, it doesn't really have the like, most success. Uh, more like Dayfox has more success than Gardevoir in my opinion. Maybe we put like Greninja a little bit higher than it should be. Because uh, like, it depends on the, like again, on the player, on the Greninja player. So probably like Dayfox is B plus, the highest B plus tier in my opinion. So Gardevoir is in a solid B tier. You can play Maybe moves it as well. If you play Future Side and Moonblast and you don't have your Future Side, it's very hard. You can't really farm with Gardevoir as well. So it always depends on the Gardevoir player. Now we have Candle. I think Candle is a pretty solid B tier, B. I think it's a very cool character, a very strong character as well. It doesn't really have the best early game, but when you play Flamethrower, you get level 5. It is very strong. It is very good in the specific characters. Overheat is very nice ability. Its Unite move is very unique and very cool. Candle is the only attacker that gets max HP sealed. I think it gets 40% healed when he uses its unite move, unlike the other attackers. So I think Candle here, like, he's a nice character. He's, he's pretty good. He's not really high picked in competitive. For example, in the World Championship, the Japanese team we played against, like Mami's team. I always say Mami, but it's uh, Reject. When we played against, but it's not, Mami is not a Reject. I'm sorry. We played against Haruta in Reject, and they played Candle at Worlds, but it just, it didn't look that great. Was also not really played in day two. The candle is a solid B plus tier. Amarush, I think Amarush is a very solid A tier. I it got like a recent change where you don't really get the, I think you don't get the damage reduction anymore from flame, flame charge plus, but you get a shield. You can play fl like fire spin flame charge. You can play a uh, fire spin uh, psychic. I think Amarush is just a very unique character, very cool character. It is still kind of new, so you still you have to like test it a little bit. But people are popping off in the competitive of Amarouge. It has high carry potential as well. For you, it's Estia still. So the characters I put in Estia are like characters who I think can be very nice, very powerful. So S+, I will come back to this later, but as a spoiler, one of these characters are just very powerful right now. I got an emergency patch and I mean, <laughs> it's just way too broken. So S+, is the, is the character that's most broken in the game. So yeah about that uh, but we're gonna come back to this later i think amarush is high a plus i wouldn't say it's s tier because my reasoning for that is amarush doesn't really have the best rip it doesn't have any ripping potential it does have a lot of damage on the psychic and like armor cannon build but characters like mew or pikachu they can work really very well on their own and the only reason why i put s tier on mew is because if you are a very great mew player mew is very powerful like in competitive so that's the only reason why I knew is S tier. For most of the competitive players, I would put Mew A plus A tier. But yeah, for me, Amorish is a high A plus tier, high A tier. It is very high picked as well. You pick it most of the time in first pick as well, a second pick. It's a very good, great character. I would put the Sejua in B tier, probably under Venusaur. Because I think the Sejua is a very great character. Funny fun fact, I played the Sejua yesterday in a tournament and I was popping off. Like it was so fun. Because I I got like 6-6 six, six in the early game because I didn't get punished. But I think if you play against better teams or like high competitive teams, this should try, it's gonna be very hard um, to play. At the World Championship, almost no one played this enjoy as well. I didn't really get a recent buff, but I think this enjoy is a very great character. So probably B tier, close to B plus, but I think it's just a balanced character. A great character and competitive. Now we have the Miladon. Miladon is very close to S+. Miladon is a very powerful character, very skill intense character. For anyone who is watching this tier list, please try to play a bit more Miladon. I know a lot of people think they are good at Miladon, but trust me, like there's so many things you have to check. Check out UnitedB, shout out to UnitedB for always giving these informations from the characters. Read UnitedB, read the character, see what the character actually does, and then play it. 
my biggest tip is probably going to be a, a play around to passive a little bit more. When you play Electro Drift, try to charge your Electro Drift um, before you participate in a team fight. So you can already use the enhanced Electro Drift during a team fight. But yeah, like, Milan is very skill intense, in my opinion. It is kind of easy to play, but very strong early game, very strong mid game, very strong late game. It's just one of the best characters in the game right now. Um, with Zation, big spoiler. Right, and I got a recent buff. Um, the the cooldowns got nerfed. I mean, like, got buffed, increased. So you can spam, you can spam a bit more Blizzard. I think Auroville is a very nice ability. I think Aenon has a lot of like play potential in competitive. But again, if you play against uh, Amarus, this is an A9. Every time you try to get close to your teammates or to the enemies, he's just gonna armor cannon you, and then you're gonna be like 50% HP, and then you have to reset. So in competitive, it's and it's a little bit hard to play A9. It's very draft dependent. But I think A9 is a very solid B plus Pokemon. With the recent buffs, I would put it in B plus, not B tier. So close to A tier, but because all of these characters are just very good into A9, it's very rough to play A9. It's good into double arounders. It surfaces into double mage. You could play Inan as a potential XP shot user using a rare veil, but yeah, Inan is in a tough spot because of the meta. Yeah. Buzzwell, in my opinion, Buzzwell is like an A tier Pokemon. I think that Asia would put Buzzwell like B plus, B tier, maybe A minus. In the West side, we really like the Buzzwell character. Asia doesn't really play Buzzwell that much. The issue I'm having with Buzzwell is. Every time I see Buzzball winning the early game very hard, he gets 6 stacks, he gets 7-9, and then he doesn't do anything in the mid game and late game. Like, it, I think it really depends on the Buzzball player and the way the team plays with the Buzzball. For Buzzball to be, like, very good. That's why I put it in A tier. Probably better than u 2 y as well. Like, if you are a very good Buzzball player, you can, like, you can legit just carry games on your own. If you manage to... Be strong in the early game, get good in the mid game, and do something useful in the late game. Most of the time I see buzzword players just running into five people and dying and then lose the game. So it's, it's, I think it depends on the buzzword player, but it's a very good character. And I also think that buzzword is gonna get buffed. Because there's gonna be a recent skin, uh, leak, and that skin looks very amazing. So I think that buzzword is gonna get a recent buff, and it's gonna be very, very OP as well. So probably it's gonna be like the buzzword blasters meter again. Like back in the day. So we have Tyranitar. In competitive, I would put Tyranitar C, maybe a C minus. Tyranitar is in a very like tough spot. It used to be very, very strong. Like S tier close to A tier. In solo queue or competitive. But it got nerfed and it's very hard for Tyranitar to scale throughout the early game. And currently the issue we are having is we have so many good characters in the early game like Miradon, Pikachu, Mew, Amarouche when he gets level 5, that Gita has a very hard time like scaling. And even if you get level 9, it's gonna be 5 minutes and the enemies are level 11, and then you don't really have the biggest impact. But I, I do think Tyranitar has a spot in competitive, maybe with a like, new buff, but it is very tough. If you play against a really good team, they will punish you for playing Tyranitar. Lucario, I think Lucario is a solid 8 tier. I always been A tier. I feel like Lucario has never been B tier in competitive. Obviously, there were like spots where Lucario was the best attacker in season one. It was always a great Pokemon, but Lucario is just a very great character. It got a E speed buff on its cooldown, so that's very cool. So for the ones that are missing E speed a lot, uh, this buff is for you. But also, like if you are just very good at E speed, you're gonna do crazy pace with it. So I would probably put Lucario in. Higher than Buzzball. A plus tier for sure or A tier. Close to A plus. When you are very good at Lucario, it's probably A plus. But if you are like decent on Lucario, it's A tier. Strong early game. Um, strong abilities as well. You can use E speed against mages probably. You can use Power Punch against a lot of CC Pokemon. And you have like, just a great Pokemon overall. Cypher. I think Cypher is A tier. I think Cypher is a very great character. Obviously, it's more like a speedster than I wonder. But I, I believe it has Alwanda stats. Um, Cypher can carry games. You can play nearly every build on Cypher. I personally like the double hit build a bit more. But I know that the Asia side likes to play Sport Dance. It has a lot of carry potential. It can swipe an enemy team instantly in less than like 5 seconds. But yeah, Cypher is a very great character. Again, it depends on the player. But in competitive, I would put it in a solid A tier. 
Not A plus, but solid A tier. Aggislash? Mm. I mean, like, Aggislash is kind of weird. Because I do think that Aggislash has, like, carry potential. It is, like, good. But I kind of see it as, like, a Tyranitar. So, even if you get level 7, if you play against specific drafts, it's going to be very tough. I don't think I would put, like, Aggislash on a C tier. Because I actually think this character is very nice. It has good secure potential. It has great ripping potential. Once you get level 7, it's great in the mid game as well. I think for Eggy Slash, I would put it probably B tier. I don't think I would put it B plus or C plus tier or B minus. I think it's a solid B tier. Maybe B, min B minus. The reason why is just like, I feel like even if you get like good on Eggy Slash and you are playing it very well, it is very hard to carry the game against specific characters, but against specific compositions. I think if they buff Eggy Slash one more time, it's probably like A tier is plus. But it's just in a very tough spot. I think it's better than Aegis, like, Glaceon and Syndrace. I'm a big Gardevoir believer. I think Gardevoir is a very great character. And, like, like Venusaur, if you get a Solar Beam plus Ultimate Comp, you just make enemies disappear. I think Garchomp is a great character. I would probably put Garchomp B+. Plus. And it's very good into almost every B character as well. It can beat uh, characters in the A tier as well. I always compare the tier list. It has very great engage potential. It has good early game if you know how to play it in the early game. Like with fighting potential. It is a great top laner. Like, I think it was Metallic. Correct me if I'm wrong. I think, I believe it was Metallic who played Garchomp at the World Championship. And he was playing it very well. People even banned the Garchomp away from him. If you play a character that gets banned in the World Championship because it is very good, like, it's just gonna be popping off. But that they're saying it's not Metallic. Wait, who was the Garchomp player again? I believe that, I believe it was Orange Juicers where Garchomp got banned. He was playing a very good Garchomp. Oh, it was Machizel, sorry. Oh my god, I I keep, yeah, Machizel, sorry. So Machizel was playing, performing very well on the Garchomp, Metallic is on Nemesis, I bet. Alright, so we have Charizard. Charizard used to be S tier. It got a recent nerf on its Unite Move cooldown, which was one of the things that made Charizard very, very powerful. Its abilities also got nerfed. It was S tier, like, it was definitely an S tier Pokemon. One of the best Pokemon in the game. I mean, obviously, it's always getting banned as well. I, I played Charizard yesterday with uh, Galaxy, and he performed very well on it. So I'm not really sure where to put it. People might say it's B tier and it might be very bad right now. But I think Charizard is still fine. But yeah, like, I think that Charizard is still A tier. We played it in the, like, we played it in the tournament, and it still performed very well. Like, I, I still have to, like, play more competitive or see more competitive games. But I don't think Charizard is like B tier right now. It's still very good. These nerfs are actually interesting. I gotta play it more. But the auto attack feels a lot weaker. Yeah, that's true. So I'm gonna put it for on B tier right I mean on A tier right now. I don't think it's A plus right now. I think it's in a solid A tier. Just from the experience I have. Next up we have Zacian, one of the best runners in the game. Again, quick shout out to competitive players who are watching this tier list. Please play Zacian. Please practice session. Please read Unite DP to learn the character. Watch pro players. Ask questions. Look at guides. Zation and Miradon are a must in your role because it makes your draft very strong. Because people are either forced to ban out the character against you or have strategies against you. But these two characters specifically are just very good. So practice them. These are the best characters in the game. I probably think that. I can't really say who is better. Miradon and Zacian, I think both are fine. Both have their strengths and their weaknesses. Obviously, they have ice energy. I I personally think Zacian is a little bit better than Miradon, but maybe I'm not really sure. I would probably put, in my opinion, Zacian higher than Miradon, but Miradon is just very good. What do you guys think, Chad? Pretty sure Zacian is, is better. Yeah, I just think Zacian is very overtuned. Okay, so Denied, Denied is weird. I feel like they always nerf Denied for some reason. So, like, Outrage got nerfed. Hyper Beam got nerfed, like, like competitive teams like Kabi Chance or like pro teams, they made Dinad work, right? They got second place in the IS Cup this year. It looked very strong. Hyper Beam is a very nice secure tool. It has very strong early game when you get level 5. It has a very strong ganking potential. When you get level 11, like level 8 at 7 minutes, almost nobody can contest you if the enemies are not having like a 7 level 9. 
it one shots you before you do the objective. So I think that you know it's probably a. I think that the character is just very good in general. I'll probably put it close to Charizard, next to Charizard. Sci-Fi is probably like close to B plus, A minus. Sci-Fi is just a solid A tier. The next up we have Blaziken. I mean like Blaziken, Blaziken and Serial Edge. We're gonna talk about Serial Edge after this. Like very strong level seven power spike, level eight as well. Very good secure. Like d when you get level eight, it's very hard to out secure a Blaziken on our objective. The only issue I'm having with Blaziken is that if you don't manage to get level like level seven quick enough, then you get abused in the early game. I think it's like level five power spike is just not the greatest. You see a lot of invades uh, from Asia happening when someone plays Blaziken, but overall like one of the best secures in the game. A lot of damage, very OP, just very high STR. So again, Mew is STR just because depending on the Mew player, you can like make Mew very powerful. I would even say that Cerulege is probably. What do you guys think? Blaziken or Cerulege? Who is the better character? Like the more I see Cerulege player playing Cerulege, I like like watching more Cerulege players than Blaziken. But again, like Blaziken has such a good secure and that like such a good carry potential. Then I feel like it's very hard to like judge who is better. I I personally think that the matchup Cerulege versus Blaziken both can be good. Like both have good matchups. They do complete different things. So it's awkward to compare. I mean, it's true. Blaziken is more for secure. Cerulege is more for executing enemies, one-shotting them, creating space, but the outside is secure. So we probably put them both in the same tier list. Then we have Mewtwo X. I personally think Mewtwo X is a great, like, very great character. I think it is a bit strange. A lot of people are not playing Mewtwo X. Like, I, we could argue about it. B plus, A tier. I don't think Mewtwo X is bad. I think it's a good character. Like it, it has good matchups. It is very good in the early game as well, in my opinion. When you get level five, you can just fight enemies. You can play a Mewtwo X Pisha as well. I don't really have an opinion on Mewtwo X. Maybe it's just B plus. Following up the tier list, we're gonna go with Mimikyu. I think in competitive scene, Mimikyu is a very nice character, especially when you play LAN event and where things can go very intense. A lot of people forget about the Shadow Sneak from Mimikyu. So if you are not playing Mimikyu or you never played against it, it can catch you off guard. So it's definitely in high A tier on that regard. I think it's very close to A, like, I think it might be the best A tier Pokemon in this tier list on top hand side. Charizard is a little bit weird, so we still have Charizard at 8 minus, because I think that Charizard may not be the best Pokemon currently, but it's still very strong, although it has gotten a massive debuff. Maybe Q is a bit weird, I think. It depends again. This is a competitive tier list, the reason why Mew is so high. Something we could do is, like, have an SS tier list. My reason for Mew being so high is, if you are very good at Mew, you can hard carry games. That's why I think um, these type of characters are in SS. So we're gonna go for SS, S, SS, and S. I think we can like try to separate it a little bit. I think that Zacian, Midaidon, in my humble opinion, Serial Edge as well, is an SS. I think that, like I think that Savage is very broken. I think Blaziken and Savage are both like kind of equal, but this is just like from my competitive op opinion. I really don't like playing against Savage. I think it's much easier to play against a Savage than a Blaziken, but this might be because of the best bias. I think if you play against an Asia Blaziken, then it's gonna be a bit uh, more rough than playing against. Not to flame the West side, but I think the Asia Zacian. Like Blaziken, that's very good. Mimikyu could be SSS as well, but I think it's A plus because I think it gets hard countered by Umbreon. But we're gonna talk about Umbreon a bit later. Uh, Machamp, I think Machamp, like it got a recent change on its Unite move. I don't personally like it because they reduced the damage from 30% to 25%, and the ultimate um, lengthen is like, like six, I think it's eight seconds now instead of 10 seconds. I don't think Machamp is eight tier. I think it's Unite move is like cool. Now you can activate it instantly. So before, like we could argue about this. Like before, it was a bit 
easier to predict because you need to use Yunan move into Yunan move. So it was a bit harder to hit. But I think uh, being able to use the Yunan move, um, like take the buff and then keep attacking with them, I think was very good. But now that like you just use your ultimate instantly, I think it's very hard to hit accurate ultimates on, on Tom. Uh, Scizor, this competitive tier list, I think Scizor is C tier. It's not the best character, it is very bad into special attackers. It can be good against attacker composition. Uh, it's probably one of the worst Pokemons in this tier list. But I don't think it's as worse as Tita or Duraldon. I think Duraldon is probably the worst, just from my opinion. It did perform in the Unity European Cup. And it did won a game. But I just think Duraldon is a very bad Pokemon for a uh, competitive scene. As, as again, these STF SS Pokemon can just one shot Duraldon, Dragapult. Like not Tita, but they can abuse the early game from Tita. Uh, Gyarados got a recent uh, change and nerf. I think it's still very strong. I think it's probably one of the best top laners in the game. I would probably put it A plus close to. Uh, I'm not sure. Like I think Amaroos is a very good Pokemon. Probably like next to Amaroos, kind of close. I think it's a very strong Pokemon, very decent. Uh, Metagross. I think Metagross is a solid A tier. Don't get me wrong. I think uh, Metagross is a bit hard to play. But when you get level 13 with Metagross and you play against a specific draft in competition, I also played Metagross in the World Championship. It, it was fine, like, it wasn't bad. I think it's a very underrated one. Um, not a lot of people play it, but it also was one of the reasons why the World Championship, like, why the former World Champion, Luminosity Gaming, I believe they lost against a Metagross who played Jorah Boy. So yeah, Metagross played Jorah Boy and Headbutt, and they were one of the reasons why the world champion uh, got eliminated eliminated in day one. So I think it's a very underrated Pokemon. It's probably higher than Charizard. It's a bit hard to like argue about Charizard because I'm not sure where to put him in the tier list. I, I definitely think it's a consistent Pokemon. So I would probably, this is just like my bias here, put it a solid ATR higher than Dragonite. Right, now we have Phalanx. I think Phalanx is trash. I, I don't think it's a good character. Like. There's so many good characters into Phalanx. It's very hard to execute. The, like, when Phalanx first came out, it was playable because it was very strong, but right now, you play Phalanx, you play against the wrong characters. If you play against one, like, against Zacian, Gridaidon, Serenade, Basic, and Pikachu or Mew, you are basically doomed. So in comparison, I don't think it's the lowest C tier. I think it's like C+, close to B-. minus. It is probably playable. But the competition says it already, right? Nobody plays the character, except only a few people. Serena, I think Serena is a very high A tier. Uh, probably, it's a, it's a bit hard. I'm, I'm not really sure if I want to say Serena is better than Mimikyu. But at the same time, Mimikyu gets countered by a lot of Pokemon. But Mimikyu has such a great carry potential as well. So what do you think? I think Serena is such a good character. I think, again, this is competitive. He is comparing west to asia but also keeping in mind the skill intensity that you can have with the character so if you are a very good serena player it looks insane if you are a very good mimikyu player it looks very insane so that's the reason why uh, Mew is an s tier i mean like we could put lazy in an ss as well but this is like my my humble opinion so i think it's a bit hard to compare mimikyu to serena i think both are fine I would probably, I would probably say that Mimikyu is a bit more consistent than Serena, because there, there's not a lot of players who make Serena look very good. Uh, Water Bear, Water Bear is a little bit weird, because, like Asia said, that Water Bear is probably the best character in the game, right? It was like SS tier. Now it got nerfed. I would not put it in S tier, but I would probably keep it in a solid. A tier, maybe A minus. Next to Charizard. Because I'm not really sure where to put it. Because I have to see some games to, to bear. I personally really hate the changes. I don't know why they keep nerfing the charging strikes and then buffing them again. Can you just nerf the damage and like keep the cooldowns? The moment you cut down the cooldowns on Water Bear, you can't do these fancy combos anymore. So it's very hard to play. So I'm not really sure. Like In solo queue, maybe 7 Black Emblem. Then you can play like Amplifier and make it work. I think it's an A tier for now. 
it's a bit hard to judge. I think the Asia side they think it's very good. Okay, so yeah. I think Water Bear is a solid A tier. Azimare, I think Azimare is like so Azimare is kinda weird. Because I think I don't think Azimare deserves the C tier. But thinking about the team fights, it's very tough to fight with Azimare. But I do think it's a B tier. I don't think it's like it might be B minus. Maybe I'm a little bit I think the Cinder is like a B tier. It's not by B minus. I think Cinder is a fine character. Or it's just very squishy. Um, I will probably put Azimare above these characters. I think Azimare can work. It has a pretty good great early game. Once you get level 4 and you get like 6 decks, it's very disgusting. So, I will probably keep the Azimare in a B tier. A little bit higher than the others. These attackers specifically are all great attackers. It's just very hard to perform on them. Ushifu, I think Red Ushifu is still a solid character. It has always been a fun character. The only issue about Ushifu is probably the early game. I think it's I think it's slightly worse than Dragonite. So I'm gonna put it in a solid A tier, close to A minus. I don't think Ushifu is bad, but I think that there's probably better options than Ushifu. Like you wanna pick Serulet, you wanna pick Blaziken, you wanna pick Dragonite, you wanna pick Mimikyu. I think Amaruch is also a great secure. So Ushifu is probably in a solid A tier, close to A minus. Maybe like Cypher and Cypher and Ushifu are, are I don't think there's any A minus Pokemon, honestly. I mean, I might put Mewtwo in an A minus tier. I think Mewtwo X is probably A minus for me. The reason why Death Fox is not A tier is because of the early game. But I think it's a very great character. Alright, this is for the Arondas. Moving up to the Zobro. Um, Zobro has always been a fun character. It has never been bad. It got uh, like recent buffs as well. Not recent buffs, but like. A few months ago, I would probably put like Snobra is a very consistent character. It is not considered being the best defender, but it's in a very high eight tier. Like you can shut down, you can shut down Blaze against several edgeations of Snobro. So competitively thinking, I think Snobro is in a very good spot. I don't think it's a bad Pokemon at all. I will probably put it next to Inteleon to keep it there. Very strong character overall. Then we have the Crustle. I don't think Crustle is a bad character by any means. But it's very hard to see Crustle performing in my opinion. Since this is a competitive tier list, I want to be a bit more strict with what I categorize. I don't think Crustle is a B tier Pokemon. I think it's A minus, thinking about A minus Pokemon. My reasoning why is because Crustle is very good into mage composition. I think it, it does pretty well into me, I don't. But nobody plays double mage in competitive. Like, there's only a few players who play double mage that can make it work. But even if you play double mage, if you play against like Arondas, like Serial Edge, it's just very tough. So I think Crystal is a solid A minus. I don't think it's B tier. I think it's like it can be consistent, it cannot be consistent. But overall it's very annoying to deal with. It has great like survivability. And in my opinion, one of the best defenders to protect bosons as well. Umbreon, pretty simple, SS tier. I might be a bit little bit biased about it. Can put it in S tier. But in competitive, I think you would pick Umbreon in first pick nearly like 70% of the time. And then in the second pick, you would probably pick it in the first, second pick as well. I think Umbreon is just fairly, like very high, highly valued. I think it's a very strong character. And if I think about the competition, like Umbreon is just almost in every comp. It can work in every comp. You can play it as a support as well. So it's probably a very, not overrated, like not even overrated. It's just a strong character. It's strong, like it's broken. Then we have Blastoise. I, I really like Blastoise. I will put it in a A plus tier. I think Blastoise is a very good spot right now. I think that Blastoise might get buffed again because that's going to be a recent skin. But Blastoise feels very, very good. So it feels so tanky now with the special defense and defense buff, but also with the rapid spin buff. It feels kind of unkillable when you get level 13, honestly. And the Surf Hydro Farm also feels very great in the early game. So I think. Blastoise is probably back in the meta again. Very nice to see again. I really like Blastoise right now, and I think it can perform really, really well. And we have Snorlax. I think Snorlax is in a very great spot right now. It is probably next to Gyarados, maybe above Gyarados. So I'm not really sure about that. They buffed the Flail, uh, the block movement speed. They buffed Flail's cooldown. Snorlax speed's very great. It always has been like a kind of good defender, but it's never really been in the spot spotlight too much. Because of Umbreon and Mamoswine. Mamoswine got nerfed. But I think Snorlax just feels very good. You can even play it in the top end side. 
if you watch my recent videos, it is very fun to talk in this way. Like the block play combination is very cool, but even also like the yawn from buff, which is very powerful. So not really sure if I should put it above Magic Cow. I'm gonna put it above Magic Cow for now. Mama's fine. I think Mama's fine is still a solid character. I would I, like before I would have put it in S tier like hundred percent, but I feel like the earthquake nerfs I kind of put nerf. Like the amount of times you like you use earthquake to stun your enemies, you can't really do that anymore. Two seconds is a lot of time. So the question is if I should put it S tier or A plus because it's definitely high A plus. But I'm not sure if it's S tier anymore. What do you guys think, Chad? Like, I don't know if it's S S tier anymore. I think it's A plus. Like the earthquake changes were actually pretty fine. I mean, Ice Pack is still very broken. You can still do crazy stuff with it. Yeah, like I guess. Okay, we're gonna keep Mama's Man in the S tier, S minus. Just because right now in the competitive scene, a lot of people play around us, and I think it's very good for around us. It's a very, I think in my opinion, a very small S minus. Close to A plus. I'm more leaning towards A plus. But we're gonna, we're gonna keep it in the S tier. Why not? Kudra? I think Kudra is a solid D tier. I wouldn't say it's a trash Pokemon in competitive. It is very hard to make it work, but I don't think I would put it in B minus or C tier. I think it's in a solid D tier. Like, don't get me wrong, guys. I don't give it, like, I don't, I know Gudra doesn't really perform well in competition. Every time you pick it, it doesn't really, work, like, look good. But I do think that Gudra has high competitive value, even though it doesn't really perform well. But just like the curse items, the like Gudra, like, very weak in the competition because people like to pick curse items. But otherwise, I think it is a solid D tier. I don't think it deserves B minus or lower. I see it like Azimaru as well. That's why I put it next to Azimaru. Lapras, Lapras is a solid D tier. I think if you just like give it a slight buff next to Gudra, above Gudra, it is a very nice character, very nice ultimate as well. But it just doesn't do damage anymore. Like, there's no damage. Like, we need damage on the character. We get a patch which is called freezing, freezing something, but Lapras is not getting any love. Like, and I know that Lapras was like S plus as S tier in the Zacian meta when Zacian was broken. But come on, like Lapras still needs to get some love. I'm not sure. I, I, maybe it's above Cremorant, but I think it's next to Cremorant. I think it's a solid B tier. The next, Reden. I'm sorry, Gideon. I really hate doing you like this. I know the Japanese people think Gideon is trash. I also hate them for that. I don't think Gideon is bad. I don't think it's CTR. I think it's way better than Kremlin. It's way better than Lapras. I want to be realistic. I don't think it's as great as Machamp. I think it's better than Machamp. But just because I am biased with this. I think Gideon is in a solid BTR. I don't think it's his CTR. I don't know why the Japanese people hate Gwiden so much. I think it deserves some love. I think Esmond is probably better than Gwiden in competition. But I don't I don't think Gwiden is in a solid B tier. Come on guys. Don't put Gwiden in C tier or B minus. I just Gwiden hate. So let me clarify again. Gwiden is a nice character, but it needs to get codon reduction buffs. The codons are very high on Gwiden. It is very annoying, very squirrely, but it is a more a defensive carry, like Pokemon than a carry Pokemon. So you play it to be extremely annoying and go on the backline all the time. You can even one-shot Inteleon or Mew, right? Or Pikachu. But it's very hard to deal. So if you buff the, if you reduce the cooldowns on the abilities, buff the HP bar, give it a little bit special defense and defense, I think Reden is going to be like, not here. But it's just me being biased. Revenant, solid A tier, close to A plus. I think uh, that like Sonics might be a little bit better than Revenant playing here. But again, competition wise, if you are a correct like Revenant player, you can carry games with this. So that's why I put Revenant above Sonics. I might have overvalued Blastoise a little bit, but again, I think Blastoise is gonna be very good in competition. So this is also just a prediction for what is coming next. Um, yeah, Kremlin just a solid A tier. You can play it as a defender, you can play it as a top laner. Very much like the Curse Pit with Horn Leash. But you can also play Pain Spit. Oh, 
I think Hoa is next to Driven and Snorlax and yeah, next to Driven and Snorlax. I think Hoa is a great character. Fire Spin Ho is extremely broken. When you get level 13, you can carry games with this. So I'll probably put it above anyone else. I don't think it's S tier. I think I need to see more to put it in S tier. I also don't think Mama's Mine is I don't think Mama's Mine is S tier. I put him to high guys. Mama's Mine is probably A plus and Ho is A plus. I I don't think Mama's Mine is S tier as well. Like you can also pick Ho now instead of Mama's Mine. Like Mama's Mine is not really a priority pick anymore as well. We're gonna put it in A tier, A plus. Ho A plus, I think Ho is a very great character. You can revive people. Once people understand how to play with Ho, I think it's gonna be very great. So Mama's Mine, I mean Ho close S tier, but A plus. Um it's a little bit awkward to play as a defender. Because once you get level five it's kinda weird. You can also play it as a carry on top lane. Once you get level 13, it's just extremely powerful. So I think Ho is a solid A plus tier. Next, Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff has probably more usages with Dark right now. So I will put it a little bit higher for competitive. But I want to be realistic again with the tier list. I think it is between Machamp and Wigglytuff. I think Machamp can probably perform a little bit better than Wigglytuff. Because again, I see it as a defender. Competitive wise, there's just way more defenders to use than Wigglytuff. Wigglytuff can be used against Sirulich to cancel the Revenant Wrench or like nullify it instantly with the Unite move. Um, I don't think Wigglytuff is a bad character by any means. It has competitive value. It is not solid B tier. Not B minus, not C tier. Just a great character. Next. Now the question is guys, do we want to put Mime on A minus? A tier or B plus? Because Mime is weird, right? We have like Mime players like Buff HD who are very good at Mime and they can like be very disgusting. You can play Mime top lane side, you can play Mime bot lane side. I want to be realistic with the tier list. A minus B plus. A minus B plus. Very hard to say. I don't think it's uh, A tier. I think it's A minus B plus. But now the question is I think Devox would probably perform better than Mr. Mime in the competitive scene. I think it's gonna be a solid B plus tier. I don't think it's A tier. Just because of the fact that I think that other defenders could probably perform better than Mr. Mayim. But I also think that Devox can perform better in competitive. So I'm gonna put it in B plus. Um Graf, don't hate me for this. But this is just my opinion. Let me know in the comments below what you think about Mime as well. Because I'm curious about it. If able B tier, I don't think it's B minus. I don't think it's like that bad. I would probably I would probably see a Cliff Able above Wigglytuff. Lapras. Gremlin because of the recent nerfs. So like I also compare would I see Cliff Able instead of these Pokemon? I think I would see Cliff Able more than all of the characters that are listed here. Like, I'm not sure if Eggy Slash is a bit, a little bit too low. I mean, I think the situation is very great as well. So, uh, I think Eggy Slash is fine. I think maybe as an OHP a bit lower. Kudra. Kudra, like, probably Eggy Slash and the situation are both Kudra. But yeah, I, I think that the Fable is probably been more seen with these kind of characters. Like you will probably not pick uh, the Fable at all because of the things. But I could see teams picking up the Fable, like you said, because of the gravity. So this is just like my bias here that Cinderace is that high. I think Cinderace is a very great carry, very underrated carry. But I think it can be very good. In my opinion, it's just better than... I mean, like, maybe a candle is a little bit better than Cinderace. But I'm biased with this. I think Cinderace is better than Espionage and Candle. Alright, next. Eldegoss is tier. Always been a great character. Always been uh, performing well in the competitive, competitive scene. At some point, there was Hoopa and Lizzy. But I think Eldegoss is a very good character. Now the question is, do I want to, like, value Eldegoss that high? Or do, do I want to put it in a solid A plus tier? Because if I would have put it A plus, I would have put it above O. So my question is, on the west side, we like Eldegoss more on the right side. On the right side, we would probably play Umbreon support over Eldegoss. I think Eldegoss is just a very great character. You can play an aggressive mid, 
but competitively wise, it's like very good healer. Works very well with double mage composition. Works very well with all rounders as well. Works very well with, like with Umberush, for example. The question is though, like, do I wanna put it S tier? Because I would probably put Hoopa Blizzy above Eldegoss. What do you guys think that A plus or S minus? I don't think it's S tier. I think it's S minus. Like it's a very great character, like by any means, like it's so strong. Just like competitively wise. I would probably play Hoopa Blizzy over Eldegoss. Nothing can compete with this Eldegoss early game. Okay, we will okay, we will put Eldegoss in S tier because of their strong early game. Because it's very strong. But I do think that Hoopa and Blizzy are above Eldegoss. I think you would probably prioritize Hoopa Blizzy above Eldegoss. So let me clarify, like Blizzy is very bad, like not, okay sorry, Blizzy is not bad in early game, it has a decent early game, it is better than Clefable, it, the early game is abusable though, you don't want to compare like put Blizzy with a Fortune on top lane and expect to win against the Eldegoss possible. The reason why Blizzy is so highly valued is because Blizzy is such an amazing character with its unite move. Blizzy Assistant is the best unit buff in the game. Like one of the best unit buffs in the game and probably the reason why it has such a high cooldown. But like Blizzy is a great character. When you get when you go into the team fight and the late team fight, most of the time you will win because you have a Blizzy in your team. So Blizzy Assistant is just very great. I like definitely deserves the S tier. I think Eldegoss is S minus. We will keep Eldegoss as S minus, maybe A plus. But for the rest, we will probably keep Eldegoss here. I think Hoopa is a very great character. There was a reason why Fennel banned... I mean, like, the reason why Fennel probably banned Hoopa is because they can't be bothered to play against Hoopa players. Peak Hoopa players can dominate games by their own. So that's why, in my opinion, Hoopa is above Blizzy. I think Hoopa is just a very strong character. It has the benefits of portaling A to B, protecting Gozons, and making plays that you would never imagine with any other support. So that's why Hoopa has S tier as well. Sableye is the solid B tier. I will probably put Sableye next to Cinderace's Pandle. The reason why I put Sableye next to Cinderace's Pandle, and I think it's better than Pandle, is because he me out. I think Sableye is a very annoying character. And if you play it correctly, it is really annoying. Like, it has the potential to score. It has the potential to send enemies to the, like, back to the base. Obviously, competitively wise thinking, I think Sableye can work. I think it can be good against Zacian, it can be. Not necessarily has to be good, but you can steal Zacian's points. Or you can play with the Zacian and steal enemies' points to give them points. I don't think Sableye is a bad character. And I think a very disgusting Sableye player can destroy the mentals from Sableye. Like from teammates. So that would be the reason why I think Sableye is that high. I think Confi is actually a, a, a minus in competitive. Like, there's so many good Pokemons, right? There's Ho, there's Mimikyu, there's Serena, there's Serenage, there's Zacian, there's Pinadon, there's Blaziken. I think Confi is not a bad character by any means. Like, it has not been S tier. It has some issues. But I think Confi is a fine character overall. Like, it can make an enemy extremely powerful. It can also be very annoying to play against. I would probably put Comfy in a just A minus. It's a probably in a solid A tier. I don't think it's A minus either. But like, I would probably put it above Castle. Probably put it above Mewtwo X maybe. But we wanna put Comfy above uh, Mewtwo X and say it's a solid A tier. The only A minus Pokemon in this D list for A is the Castle. Okay, next, we're gonna go for the Speedstars. Speedstars in Pokemon Unite are very cool, very unique. The role is very squishy, very uh, backline orientated. Also has some great characters and creates the tier tools. So we're gonna go with that now. Absol, obviously it's just a solid A tier. There is a reason why the world champions banned uh, Nikias Absol. They just couldn't be bothered playing against a, like not one click Absol, but like a really good Absol player. So they just like did the respect ban on Nikia. Made sure that they will not play against Absol. Absol is a very great spot. It is a very powerful character. I would probably put it next to Dragonite Ushifu on Absol. 
because all of these characters can be very great, but at the same time can be very, can be very bad, depending on the, how the game flow goes. But I think Absol is a very solid ATR. It's a really good character. It can one shot Pikachu. It can one shot Miradon, Mew. It can even one v one the Mimikyu if you get the passive. So yeah, pretty solid ATR. Definitely deserves the spot. I think Talon Flame is ATR as well. The reason why I'm saying that, I know people will disagree with me. Every time you see Talon Flame in the World Championship, it just doesn't perform. It looks very bad. But it's just. Obviously, the beta is just very terrible to play Talon Flame. Like, characters like Zaysi and Miradon, Privilege, they're just very powerful. But I, I personally think that Talon Flame is a great, like, solid ATR. I don't think it's a bad character by any means. I think it can carry games by storing or killing the backline like Sniffer. So I will probably put it next to Shifu. Lupia is a bit weird. I still have to see a little bit more for the, on the Asia side, see if it's correct or not. But I will probably, probably put it in the solid ATR. Next, Zedaura. I think Zedaura is a fine character. I think it's a solid idea. I think it's probably above Talon, like Talon Fame. The reason why is, is like I'm, I'm a little bit biased because like you, if you saw the World Championship, right? Like Toonstam was performing very well on the Zedaura. Overall did play out to the Zedaura against uh, Baby Mazu's team, I think. Um, Zedaura is a great character in the competitive scene. Might not be the best currently, but it's still a very great character. You can combine it. You can still play it. It is good into Zoroark as well. And it has a it has decent matchups. So Zedora can definitely carry games. Um the question is if I wanna put it above Absol because of its consistency. Not a lot of characters like players can make Zedora work. So I think I will just put it in a A tier for now. Lithion um definitely deserves the S tier. I think it's the one of the best characters in the game. I'm not really sure why it didn't get nerfed. We could argue about putting Leafeon in the SS tier because it's very hard to judge. Like the SS tier Pokemons are Pokemons that I think you can play in every game and it's disgustingly OP. But I don't think you can play Leafeon in every game. You could just play Leafeon in every game and just like one shot everyone. But I definitely think that Leafeon is in the S plus close to SS tier. So we're gonna put it here. The reason why Pikachu is ab not above Daisy Ken is because Lazy Kid is just broken, like, let's be real guys, like, a Pikachu can carry games, but a Blazy can get dominant games. Like, if you watch Azor Blazy Kid players, compared to West players, they will just destroy you. So, that's the reason why a Blazy Kid is so high. But yeah, I think Leafon is very great. Um, it's a bit hard to compare both. Blazy Kid is really good until it gets, when he gets level 8. Leafon just destroys the entire early game. So, yes, Karada. In my humble opinion, I think Yes Karada is a solid B plus tier and B like A tier. It can definitely shine in competitive. It has some usages. It is kinda strong. Doesn't really have the best uh, swablo fight. Because once you get level four, like you don't really do anything. But when you get level six, level seven, it's very cool. So I think it's high B tier, A minus. The question is like, do I wanna put it above like Bellfog? I don't think so. I think I wanna put it in B plus next to Garchomp. Because I think both characters can work. But I even think Greninja is better than Yoskarada right now. So I will probably put it in B B plus next to Venusaur. I think Venusaur is even better. Now the question is do I put it when I put it next to Cinderace? I think Cinderace can perform both of this like the success rate to perform on Yoskarada is very low. But the Cinderace success rate is also very low. And I'm very biased on the Cinderace. I think I will put Cinderace above Yoskarada. Just because of my bias here. The Zoroark, definitely in a high A plus tier. Um, it's a bit hard to categorize them here. So what we think is, if you have a perfect Zoroark game, you're just gonna destroy everyone. But at the same time, it's hard to perform. So I think I'm just gonna put it next to me, like Mimikyu. Because Mimikyu can shut down Zoroark. But Zoroark got a buff. I'm not sure why. But the buff makes the Zoroark very strong again. I think it is a very great character. Again, it's competitive tier list. If you perform well on Zoroark, you can just destroy everyone. So, I A plus tier. I don't think it's this tier just because of the way it works. In my humble opinion, I think Dodrio is this tier. You might I, like, like disagree with me, but I think like Dodrio is one of the best characters in the game. Like it looked so good against Mimikyu players as well. 
obviously the BBQ can shut down the Dodrio very, very comfortably. But I think Dodrio is just very, really, really strong. Like, it has a lot of score potential. It's early game is not the greatest. Once you get level 5, it's just going to be good. You play more try attack. I am definitely on the Asia side where I say Dodrio is one of the best characters in the game. The best side might disagree with me, but I, I just think Dodrio is one of the best characters in the game. It's very true. The solid SDR. Um, you might disagree with me on the Dodrio pick. Why is Zoroark not next to Dodrio? I just think Dodrio is very OP. Gengar, very solid A tier. I would probably put Gengar next to... Like, legit, I played it in a tournament and it looked very cool. But I want to be realistic. Like, there's not a lot of people who make Gengar work. But I think Gengar is a very good character right now in competition. But competitively thinking, like, I think the tier list so far is, like, good. I would probably put it next to Opsol. Above these characters. I think the, I think Dragonite should be a bit higher. I think Dragonite and Mewtwo Y should be probably here. Because, like, the success rate with Buzzball is very low. Every time I see Buzzball players, like, dominate games, like, they just don't do anything in the late game fight. So now, the last Pokemon. There's a reason why I put it in the last Pokemon. I have a really hard time now, like, discussing if it's SSS tier, in competi competitive, because I want to be realistic. But at the same time, I think this character is disgustingly OP. It's going to be Primal Band. What do you think, Chad? I mean, obviously, uh, some of you are not competitive, more casual, but, it, like, I I think Darkrai is as an STR. Like, he, although you can argue with me about Unstoppable can beat Darkrai, I feel like Darkrai is just very disgusting. Like, the this skill, say, like this skill scaling on Darkrai is very, very high. And to give the passive on Darkrai a 100% boost is not okay. Like, I I guarantee you guys, next week, Darkrai is going to be the most spent character in the game. Like, you can say, okay, you can use unstoppable moves like Lucario, like, you can use, what, Daisy can against Darkrai. You can probably beat him as well. But I, I definitely think Darkrai got overbuffed. And competitively, okay, obviously, we didn't see much. But my predictions are that Darkrai is the best character in the game. And it's always going to be permaband. And if it's not permaband, it's just going to smurf on you. So this is just my opinion. People will probably disagree with me and say, yeah, but you can use Unstoppable, you can use this. Against Darkrai, I just think it's still broken. Like, it is so disgusting. And I just think people have to still like, keep practicing it to make it look like the worst Pokemon to play against in the game. So in my humble opinion, I think Darkrai is currently the god tier. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tier list. Um, will I switch anything? I think Pikachu is better than Dodrio. Crazy gonna spell Leafy as well. You is here. I think Power deserves the highest A plus tier currently. We could argue about Mimikyu and Zoroark. We could argue about Serena and Blastoise. Probably, I think Serena is probably better than Blastoise, but I think also Blastoise is just very OP right now. So we stop that. Serena Amarush, Serena Amarush. I think Serena is probably better than Amarush, but West Side would probably say Amarush is better. We put Serena on the Amarush for now. He wrote us Inteleon. I like he wrote us probably more than Inteleon. I think Stark's in a good spot. So like this tier is also which Pokemon are highly gonna be picked. So I think that all of these characters that you see, you will see most of the time in the com like in competitive. You will see Mewtwo Y a little bit more than Metagross and Dragonite probably on the Asia side, but not on the West. So I will put Mewtwo next to Dragonite. These characters you will see because one tricks will play it. They will perform on it. Oshifu, you will probably pick Oshifu more, like less because you want to pick Basic and Serulet. Delphox is just a very great character. You will probably see more A9. Greninja might be a little bit higher than Guard Form. This is at least what Asia thinks, but in my opinion, this is where Guard Form stands. I am a bit Cinderace biased. Sableye is, I think, fair. Might be a little bit higher. Sableye might be even A tier. Maybe I undervalue Sableye. I don't think it's B tier. I think it's very disgusting. I think you might disagree with me, but I think I, I think Sableye is a, a minus. I would put Sableye as a minus. Like honestly, I think it's just a very great character. The West doesn't really play it that much, but we have some one trick Sableyes who are getting force banned. So I would put Sableye in a minus for the sake of the Sableye enjoyers. I think Greedent probably deserves the spot. I like Clefable, Wiggletuff, Lapras, 
few changes. Maybe Gardava a little bit higher. I think it's Felix, Dragapult, Scissor, Cheetah, and then Dr. Album. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this tier list. Uh, thank you so much for watching, guys. Let me know in the comments below again uh, what do you guys think about the tier list. What is your opinion? Do you have disagreements with me? Um, and also, like, might be the reason why. But I'm very um, happy with this tier list. I think it's great. This is the competitive tier list from uh, me as a pro player playing for the game for two years now from the current patch and the emergency patch from Dark Boy. Hope you guys enjoyed the tier list. Thank you so much for watching. And thank you so much for the love that you guys are showing me lately on the YouTube channel. Make sure to subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it. I'm going to see you guys in the next one.